Good morning and welcome. First, welcome to the faculty and thank you. Your intellectual courage, creativity, generosity, and your mentoring and challenging of today's graduates, you have made today possible. Thank you. Welcome and thank you to the staff, your tireless work, your steady goodwill and generosity make every day at Lang possible. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome and thank you to parents, family, and friends. You have sent love and money. You have stood beside and stepped aside. You have held in loving embrace and you have offered advice when it was sought and sometimes when it wasn't, you have made today possible. Welcome and congratulations to you. And of course, welcome and congratulations to the class of 2017. You have, with the help of everyone here and many others, you have met challenges, overcome obstacles, found, lost, and rediscovered and reshaped your ideas, your voice, your purpose. Today we are here to celebrate and congratulate you. Earlier this term, Eugene M. Lang the founder of our college, passed away. He was a mentor and friend to me, and a visionary who, drawing on the traditions of the New School and his own values, instilled in Eugene Lang College the passion that we all know so well, a passion for critical thought, fierce independence, engagement with the world, and an abiding commitment to social justice. In the past, he was here each May, standing up here, shaking the hand of each graduate. We miss him. Today, we will celebrate his life with a performance of his works, his words later in the ceremony. Right now, I would like to invite his daughter, my friend, Jane Lang, to the podium. Good morning, Dean Browner, honored guests, and of course, graduates. If my father, Eugene Lang, were here, he would tell you how grateful he was for Dean Browner's leadership of the college, the college that bears his name. He would also say, as he often said to me, that through giving, he received his greatest gifts. Each of you, as a soon-to-be graduate of Eugene Lang College, is a gift to him. I wish he were here to tell you so himself. He would do so with love and passion, the way he did everything. In recent years, Alzheimer's disease depleted my father's marvelous capacity to spin out ideas for new projects and to cross-examine students and faculty about their thinking and purpose. But even in the last years, there were moments when that energy and insight flashed on the screen of his mind again particularly after student concerts in his home. One day last year, after students performed a Beethoven quartet for him, he asked them 
How do you know when you've performed well? At first, the students answered blithely, well, the audience applauds. But my father shook his head. No, he said, and he put his hand to his chest and asked again, how does it feel inside when you've performed well? The students thought hard how to put into words what they had experienced, what it felt like, and they did. They described the physical and emotional elation they felt in their performance. My father nodded knowingly, satisfied that he had shared in their joy of making music and recognizing the powerful sensation of a job well done. Today, I hope each of you will pause, reach deep down inside you, and feel the physical and emotional joy in what you have accomplished. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you for sharing this day. Thank you, Jane. I now would like to invite Dominic Petman, Professor of Culture and Media and Associate Dean of Faculty Affairs to announce the departmental honors. Thanks all and congratulations again. Um, we would now like to recognize students for outstanding academic work in their programs as nominated by the faculty. Um, as I call your name, please stand and remain standing until all award recipients have been called. And everyone else, please hold your applause until all the names are called as best you can. So, for outstanding work in dance, Eller Wasserman Smith. Oh, wait. <laughs> for outstanding work in contemporary music, Noor Kaluti. And Anna Alexandra Zinovic Papadimitriou, Eric Bayless Hall. For outstanding work in theater, James Moser, Alia Hakim. For outstanding work in visual studies, Morgan Moore. For outstanding work in arts and context, contemporary music, Rebecca Zola. Dance, Isabel O'Farrell Rolston. Visual Studies, Savannah Turley. For outstanding work in culture and media, Seth Majnun and Gabriela Padilla. For outstanding work in economics, Ariana Gomez. For outstanding work in environmental studies, Harold Hahn and Emma Hayward. For outstanding work in global studies, Joanna Shea, Marissa Gary, Mariama Noguera Divers, <laughs> and Regan Rodriguez. For outstanding work in history, Shelby Bolin. For outstanding work in interdisciplinary science, Duncan Figursky and Andrea Ibarra. For outstanding work in journalism and design, Taylor Kugler, Taylor Lynch, Odalis Garcia, Charles Innes. For outstanding work in liberal arts, Mirel Kaiser and Aaron Wells. For outstanding work in literary studies, literature section, John Marston, Owen Deutsch, 
Samantha Roy Nicole Story, which is a great name for a literature um, awardee. Now for writing is Kayla Hessler. Hessler. Uh, Lisa Brenner. Victoria Hutton and Danny Schneiderman. Now for outstanding work in politics is Patrick Gallen. Outstanding work in psychology, Taylor Mugavan and Valentina Arenella. For outstanding work in religious studies, Emily Rogel. Outstanding work in screen studies, Nicoletta Hines, Maggie McLaughlin, and Veronica Stone. For outstanding work in sociology, Alex Compton and Ruby Greenberg. And finally, for outstanding work in urban studies, Mei Ping, Cassie Ang, and, and Henry Morales. So for all these awardees, Please join me in thank congratulating you. Fantastic job. So now I would like to welcome Christina Dawkins, the Director of Civic Engagement and Social Justice who will be presenting the David S. Woods Humanitarian Award. The David S. Woods Humanitarian Award recognizes graduating seniors for exceptional humanitarian service to the community. Honorees must have outstanding academic and service records, showing evidence of having extended themselves in an unusual degree to help others. This award was established in honor of David S. Woods, a New York City youth who died coming to service of another. I would now like to ask this year's awardees, Aliyah Hakim, Skylar Kate Xavier McGuire, Catherine Grace McCulley, and Holly Woodbury to please join me. majored in theater at Lang and earned a double minor in culture and media and ethnicity and race studies. Her favorite class was black theater movements, where she embarked on the most honest investigation on what it means to be black in her life. She is most proud of earning a Eugene Lang Opportunity Award to travel to the United Kingdom in the pursuit of visiting two theater of the oppressed organizations as well as attending the International Theater Festival in Edinburgh, Scotland. <laughs> Skylar Kate Xavier McGuire is a culture and media scholar with minors in gender and global studies. Their favorite course at Lang, Crip Theory and Cyborg Culture, engaged decolonizing feminist, queer, critical race, and disability studies. This year, they taught these knowledges to first-year students as Dr. Jasmine Ralt's academic fellow for queer cultures and studies. Leading such discussions has been their proudest accomplishment at Lang. Kat McCulley majored in psychology. Her favorite class was culture, ethnicity, and mental health. Kat is particularly proud to be a higher education opportunity program student 
who was able to give back to the program by being a mentor to younger HEOP students. Holly Woodbury majored in interdisciplinary science, where she learned how collaboration between natural science and the social sciences can work toward a more equitable world. In her favorite class, Genes, Populations, and Identities, she learned about sensitivity and ethics when conducting research on how stresses in the environment play a critical role in the functioning of body parts and cells. She is most proud of the creative project she completed as a first year student, which focused on public health and stigma using tuberculosis as a lens through the medium of poetry. She presented that work at the Dean's Honor Symposium in the spring of 2016. It is my pleasure to present the 2017 David S. Woods Award to Aliyah Hakim, Skylar Kate Xavier McGuire, Catherine Grace McCulley, and Holly Woodbury. I am pleased to introduce now Irene Lee, who will present the Dean's Alumni Circle Award. Irene Lee spent her childhood in the Hudson Valley and will forever hear the echo of woods and be bound to the blueness of mountains. Her work aims to build a strong and loving community through books, music, dance, and education. She is part of a feminist publishing group, Fine Dress Press. She was the writer in residence for a show and book titled The Wonder Cabinet at the Flux Factory. She creates programming and assists in directing the East Harlem site of the I Have a Dream Foundation, serving children ages nine to 13. She graduated from Lang in 2012 with a major in literary studies writing. I had the pleasure of working with her on a special exhibit of Eugene M. Lang's life and work for the 2013 Dean's List and Student Awards Ceremony. It is a pleasure to have you back, Irene. Come join me. Thank you, Dean Browner. Um, <laughs> class of 2017, it is my honor to celebrate with you today and present this award. Um, but first, let me say congratulations. You did it. And I hope that you continue to challenge yourself because it's so much fun to feel yourself grow in your challenges. So continue to do that. 4,966 alumni have graduated from Lang since the college's founding 32 years ago. Today, as you join our ranks, you grow our alumni community exponentially. As we gather, I want to bring in reverence the founder, Mr. Lang, who often said, an organization must have legs. This advice is profound, not only for an organization, which I hope some of you will start or develop in whatever passions you have, but to remember to give yourselves legs so that you can fully embrace change. A lasting thing is sustainable in its capacity to fluctuate and grow. These legs are made up of our community. As alumni, you will remain an important part of the Lang family. Together, we have the power to continue to shape this dynamic college. Lang uniquely honors us as serious learners, thinkers, doers, and change agents. I encourage you to empower and support this community, to stay connected to Lang and each other. We really carry one another. The Dean's Alumni Circle Award recognizes a student who has been a leader and advocate for Eugene Lang College, who has demonstrated a community-minded spirit and who will stay connected to Lang and the alumni community. This year, my fellow alumni and I were invited to vote for this important award. The class of 2017 abounds with many deserving individuals, but all of 
but of all those considered, two stood out. I would now like to invite the recipients of the 2017 Dean's Alumni Circle Award, Petra Zara Gerar and Sasha Hudson, to please join me. Uh, Petra is a politics major with minors in contemporary music and global studies. From establishing her own social justice publication, The Antithesis, to take on leadership roles in University Student Senate, Lang Student Union, and Social Justice Committee, Petra's main interests have been creating spaces on campus for students to freely express their thoughts, encouraging transparency throughout the university, and bridging communication between administration and the student body. Petra hopes to continue her work as an activist and artist as she prepares to continue her studies at the New School College for Performing Arts, where she will earn her master's in arts management and entrepreneurship. Sasha is an environmental studies student with a focus in urban agriculture and housing justice. Her favorite class at Lang was spatial thinking with GIS, taught by Zoe Hampstead, which led her to her interests in spatial analysis and storytelling through maps. For the past two years, she has organized Sustainapalooza a student-led event that seeks to develop actionable ideas for more sustainable and just, just urban futures. I am pleased to present this year's Dean, Dean's Alumni Award to Petra Zara Gerard and Sas Sasha Hodson. I would now like to invite Professor Elaine Savory, who received the award in 2015 to the stage to give the Faculty Advisor Excellence Award. Professor Savory, please come forward. This award is presented annually to recognize exceptional service guidance, and mentorship by a faculty advisor at Eugene Lang College. The recipient is selected based on their strong interpersonal skills and mentorship, their academic guidance attuned to both individual needs and intellectual coherence, and their effective facilitation of student decision-making and empowerment, all promoting a positive collegiate experience for advisees. This year's recipient of the Faculty Advisor Excellence Award is Andrew Meyer. Andrew is the Chair of Journalism and Design at Eugene Lang College of Liberal Arts. He's also a nonfiction author and journalist who writes on political and foreign affairs. In nominating Professor Meyer for this award, students specifically referenced his dedication, approachability, and accessibility as a faculty advisor. As one advisee wrote, Andrew is the advisor everyone hopes they will have in college. He is understanding, flexible, and kind. Every email I've sent and question I've ever asked him has been responded to promptly and as in-depth as possible. Even when I catch him in the hall or on the street, he is ready to talk. Andrew goes out of his way to be available despite significant professional responsibilities and time constraints. No one deserves this award more than him. 
And another advisee shared with us, Andrew has been my advisor for the last year and was my professor prior to that. He's a support in helping me navigate through the struggles of being a disabled student has been irreplaceable and significant to keeping me in school. For his efforts as faculty advisor, teacher, and source of support and encouragement to Lang students, we are honored to recognize Andrew Meyer with this award. And now it is my great pleasure to introduce this year's student speaker, Mariama Nogueira Devos. Mariama is receiving a Bachelor of Arts in Global Studies and Dance. One of her favorite classes here at Lang was Vogology with Robert Sember and Michael Roberson. This course looked at the history and socio-political implications of Vogue as a dance form, a community, and at times, a means of survival. As a Goral scholar, Mariama particularly valued the opportunity to travel to Colombia to meet with and learn from inspiring Afro-Colombian activists who are affected by internal displacement, racism, and a denial of many basic rights. Please join me in welcoming Mariama to the stage to deliver Lang's 2017 Student Commencement Address. songs we live fast and we die young they say we doomed to fail they say we prone to violence and I sink in silence they don't know what they saying because my generation man we on a mission and a whole world to change <laughs> Thank you. Greetings, class of 2017. Dean Stephanie Browner, faculty, staff, parents, family, and friends. It is an honor to address you at the Eugene Lang College 2017 graduation. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are situated on occupied territory of the Lenape on the island of Manahata. <laughs> Secondly, I would like to recognize the efforts, the fight, the struggles of those that have come before us, our ancestors, who paved the way and made it possible for all of us sitting here and for me to be standing on this stage. I was born in California, but spent my formative years abroad in Jamaica and Trinidad. From an early age, I was drawn to the arts. I have memories of staying after school to practice dances to the latest Sean Paul with my friends for our school's weekly talent shows. In my large family of 10 siblings, we also put on our own talent shows at home. Along with my upbringing, these early experiences shaped my passion for dance and theater and gave me empathy, a desire to help others and take action when needed. I'd like to take a moment to thank my family, as well as all of the families here today supporting our graduating class. <laughs> the song I began with, entitled Love in Transition, by the Trinidad and Tobago group Freetown Collective, touches on criticisms we young people have heard too often about our generation. If you search the word millennial in Google, you will come across statements 
that call us the least useful generation in America. Lazy, passive, and self-absorbed. As a proud member of this generation, I am here to say they are wrong. In fact, <laughs> in fact, Sitting in front of me today are hundreds of graduating students from a certain liberal arts college who prove these sentiments wrong. And for that, we graduates deserve a huge round of applause. The work that we do at Lang is profound on many levels. You see, we laid on the floor of the university center lobby bearing signs on our chests and anger on our faces as we remain silent for 13 minutes, commemorating the 13 times Eric Garner shouted, I can't breathe. As I recite this chant, I am taken back to that day when we organized a sit-in in December of 2014. I'm reminded of the overwhelming emotions I felt during the sit-in, anger and sadness, but also love and hope as I stood alongside my friends and classmates in protest, I felt such camaraderie, safety, and love. These events were organized by millennials to declare that we would not stand idly by as the reports of unjust mur murders continued. We showed up for each other, stood in solidarity, and demonstrated our commitment to a just society. As someone raised outside of the United States and unaccustomed to organizing, I was extremely grateful for the many student leaders and mentors from student organizations such as Students of the African Diaspora, Students Against Police Brutality, and Sisters Art Salon, who passed on their knowledge and helped us organize many of these events. My mentors helped me understand how to transform the burning feelings inside of me into action. Along with addressing the most critical issues of our time, Lang students live a number of different lives, involved in a number of different activities, and somehow we find a balance. Last semester alone, I was working at the advising office, had a fellowship with a nonprofit, facilitated workshops for first year students, taught soccer fitness classes on the weekend, choreographed and performed a piece for the Lang end of semester performance and for two shows outside of school, all whilst being enrolled in seven classes. It wasn't easy, but typical of what a Lang student juggles, successfully. At, yeah, like a clap. <laughs> At Lang, our work in the classroom is always in continuous conversation with our work outside of the classroom. Here, I must acknowledge our dedicated faculty for their willingness to support our projects and the great lengths they take to provide safe spaces for students while engaging in difficult conversations. In, <laughs> in courses such as vulgology and political organizing, uh, professors encouraged us to dig deeper and not take everything at face value. Thought-provoking questions arose out of discussions such as, why do you believe what you believe? What are we not considering? How can you position yourself in the work we are studying? Our faculty pay close attention to putting theory into practice and push us beyond the confines of our classroom to apply that in the real world. I was able to experience this theory and practice with my trip to Columbia last May through the Guru Scholars Program. This program is housed under the Lang Civic Engagement and Social Justice Office and awards select students the opportunity to engage their passions for social justice in practical ways. This office has provided, has provided countless opportunities for students, like myself, to receive scholarships and bolster our learning through various events. In Colombia, we met with community leaders and in our discussions drew connections between gentrification in New York City and the internal displacement of Afro-Colombians by the state and multinational corporations. This experience allowed us to learn firsthand what it means to dedicate your life to advocating for social justice. This experience strengthened my passion for using the arts 
as a medium for change in global communities. Now, as we close this chapter of our lives, a chapter which included pulling all-nighters in the university lobby, library, <laughs> posting on Facebook whenever we learned there was free food somewhere, giving free swipes of our meal plans to other students. I wish you, my fellow graduates, the utmost best. Love, kindness, support. You are resilient, strong, and have risen above many odds. <laughs> My friends, congratulations. And in the words of a fellow millennial, Malala Yousafzai, if we want to achieve our goals, then let us empower us ourselves with the weapon of knowledge and let us shield ourselves with unity and togetherness. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. It's my pleasure now to invite to the stage Aliyah Hakim and Naomi Asaturian Kanukeya. They both studied theater at Lang and are here to share our tribute to our founder and namesake, Eugene M. Lang. Last month, we lost the namesake and founding supporter of the college, Eugene Lang. Today, we are here to read a selection from Mr. Lang's personal writings. These writings pay tribute to the radical legacy, grace, and continued impact of Eugene Lang. We hope that by sharing some of his words today, we can remember and stay true to the path he laid out for us. In his 2003 speech at Iron in New York, he reminds us that it just takes one step to make an impact in the world. Even the most seemingly intractable problems can be tackled by breaking them down into manageably coherent pieces, figuring out specific solutions, and acting on them. By selecting and addressing a manageable piece, one can make a significant difference, an increasingly significant difference, because ongoing ripple effects extend its reach and magnify its reward. In his speech for the Upward Inc. Award, he urges us to focus on the next generation. Our country still has a basic problem of defense, but the line of defense is not across any ocean. The line of defense of America's future rests with our children and their future as proud and productive citizens. And in recognition of that, I urge that we embark upon and provide for the biggest arms race in history, a race to put our arms around our children around all of our children, to embrace each of them with love, courage, hope, education, opportunity, and let the imperatives of that arms race establish our national priorities. In 1986, Mr. Lang issued a predictive call to be skeptical of technological advances in his remarks on the liberal arts at Swarthmore. We must not allow technology and the anxieties it generates to stand separate unaccountable and ungoverned. But how should new technology be developed? By whom and to what ends? How much and with what priorities should the resources of society be committed to technological development? A liberal arts education must foster our abilities to answer these questions. And finally, Mr. Lang's speech at the 1985 dedication of Eugene Lang College reminds us of the values we all share as members of the Lang College community. I see a college whose focus is clearly directed to individual student development. That means small classes, working in the seminar format, calculated to stimulate intellectual interaction among students and between student and teacher. It means broad curricular scope and flexibility so that, 
under sustained faculty guidance, students can create study programs related to individual objectives and abilities. It means a curriculum that will enable students to draw enriching vitality and educational adventure from the cultural and sociological aspects of New York City. I see a college where student qualifications will be the sole consideration for admission, where there will be no discrimination, economic or ethnic, where merit and achievement will be recognized, but where every student that is admitted will receive, based on need, the financial support necessary to permit attendance. I see a college to which the rich teaching resources of the entire New School University complex will be able to contribute. It means a graduate faculty happy to work across disciplines with undergraduates. It means an undergraduate faculty committed to the priority of teaching. It also means generously supported opportunities for faculty members to pursue their researches and to develop within their disciplines. Our hopes for Eugene Lang College and its transcendently important mission rest with administrators who will give it direction, teachers who will give it drive, and the students who will give it purpose. Our family commitment truly counts for very little. It is you who will carry the burden and who will give it real meaning. To all of you, we are grateful beyond words. As members of the 2017 graduating class of Eugene Lang College, we are grateful to Mr. Lang and his family. His vision and unyielding support created the college from which we now set forth, and his ideals shaped the education that will serve us so well on our path forward. Thank you. Thank you, Aaliyah and Naomi. Mr. Lang was a man of words and action. Thank you for bringing us his words and for inspiring us to action. It is now my pleasure to introduce Professor Alexandra Delano Alonso, this year's faculty speaker. Alexandra received her doctorate in international relations from the University of Oxford. Her work is driven by a concern with the inequalities underlying the causes of migration, the structures that lead to the marginalization of undocumented migrants in the public sphere and the limited protection of their rights. Through her scholarship and tireless activism, she is focused on engaging policymakers, advocates, and community organizations to create dialogue and understand areas where policies and practice can be reshaped for the benefit of those who need it most. She teaches in the Global Studies Department and is the current holder of the Eugene M. Lang Professorship for Excellence in Teaching and Mentoring. It is a real pleasure to welcome Alexandra Delano Alonso to hear her remarks. Step up, rise up, stand up, act up, show up, wake up, wise up, speak up. The moment we are living in, it, in is demanding so much of us to be present, to listen, to challenge, to act. But how do we respond when everything we stand for is under attack? How do we imagine and work toward the future that we hope for when so much of what we assumed is unsettled? When so much of what we and those before us have worked for is pushed back? How do we work together when it is clear that the we that was supposed to stand against hate and ignorance is not what we thought it was? Instead, that line between an us and a them, the deserving, the undeserving, the wealthy and the poor, the native, the settler, the woman, the man, the gender non-conforming, the here and there, that line is being drawn thicker and deeper. 
That line forces us to ask who we are, what binds us together, and whether and how that we can be remade without these binaries. November 8 crudely revealed all the work that lies ahead in this country and assured us that the path to get there cannot be the same as it was before. As a Mexican woman, <laughs> and as part of the generation who lived through the 1985 earthquake in Mexico City, the rise of the indigenous Zapatista resistance on the day that NAFTA entered into force in 1994, and the ensuing exodus of millions left without opportunities in the name of free trade, it is clear to me that these moments of tectonic shift in this country as elsewhere are moments of possibility. That the destruction that leads us to face the ruins and the long work of rebuilding also opens the door to new solidarities and the revelation of a society endlessly fighting for justice and freedom. Moments of such fundamental change are not just about being louder and bolder and responding with urgency, but also about the need to pause and reflect about where we are, how we got here, what we learned, and how we want to reimagine and rebuild a future that truly lives up to our ideals. So I step up to this podium today, deeply honored that I have been asked to do so, with a profound sense of responsibility for what it means to speak up in this moment. A moment that is about you and your families, all the sacrifices made to get you here, and all the hopes and fears about what is ahead. A moment that is about our institutions, and our communities, what we stand for, and how we live up to those ideals every day. And a moment to imagine new possibilities, new vocabularies, new actions, new meanings, new foundations for what we hope to build. But to do this imagining, to really move forward, we have to know how to look back. In T.S. Eliot's words, to consider the future and the past with an equal mind, as time present and time past are both perhaps present in time future, and time future contained in time past. These recent months, I found myself digging through the past, going back to books I underlined furiously in high school and college, to the music that I played on endless repeat to make sense of where I was. I've gone back to notebooks and letters, looking for the person I was then, what moved me, and who I wanted to be. I found that even after leaving the country where everything I knew and loved was, after dreaming in another language, after experiencing a whole new self as a teacher, as a mother, the same passion that drove me to learn and explore and fight against the inequalities I saw all around me is still there. It is stronger. But I find that I need to be reminded of that past and how it shapes my present in order to respond and redefine myself in a moment that calls for all my energy and commitment. So one of my messages for you today is to hold on to what got you here. The friendships, the books that changed your view of yourself and the world, the poem you wrote, that drawing that revealed something new about yourself, that performance, that note that reassured you you were in the right place. It is that passion, those moments of revelation of who you are and what inspires you that will carry you forward. That is when you find your voice, and that voice is the one that others will listen to when you stand up, speak up, step up, show up. And some people will listen, but only if they also feel heard. One of the most important things we are reminded of today is that we have not been able to talk across the aisle, whichever side of it we stand on. Instead, we have discovered that there is a deeper divide than we ever imagined, with intersecting fracture lines that are now more explicit. 
If those lines of difference that aim to separate an us and a them are ever to be erased, we have to step out of our comfort zones and genuinely engage with those who we disagree with. Discarding anger and frustration simply as racism or as radicalism shuts down the possibility of dialogue and understanding and the only chance we have at building a true democracy that is real for everyone. If we just continue to repeat the same messages as before, in the same places as before, with the same people as before, confirming just what we already know, there is no opportunity for transformation. Opening up a space to listen also means recognizing and understanding our own limitations and to know that our ideals and commitments need to be constantly examined and renewed to carry us into the future. We cannot assume that these ideals live on their own or speak for themselves. In order to make them real and make them new, to reinterpret them to speak to the current moment, we need to investigate our past with critical eyes, not just to validate what we want to know, but also to reveal the uncomfortable moments that have challenged these ideas and values, revealed our contradictions, and pushed us to generate new ways of thinking and acting. All of us, in our own ways, have been shaped by and will always carry this institutional identity that is built around the notion of a continuing commitment to reinvent ourselves and challenge conventions. A new school, as an experiment founded in opposition to administrative power and bureaucracy in university spaces. A refuge for liberalism and freedom, for a progressive vision, a space for dissent, a haven, a sanctuary an academic home that welcomed a diversity of ideas, nationalities, and beliefs, a new school willing to take intellectual and political risks. We can select the parts of our history and our current makeup that reflect these values, but we also need to know, as Julia Folks has reminded us, that we have not always done so. We need to know that our university was once willing to put up a curtain to cover the Orozco murals in our 12th Street building because the depiction of the Russian Revolution was criticized as subversive and un-American in the midst of the Cold War, while the administration left uncovered the section on the Mexican Revolution because it would insult Mexico, which it considered a well-run, orderly republic. We need to know that there was a time when our administration accepted New York State government's request to ask every faculty to take an oath of allegiance to the American and state constitutions. That was also a time when members of our institution were worried that we might lose endowments or funding if we were seen as defiant or subversive by a government that had unleashed an apparatus of surveillance and repression against anything that was not American enough. So what are we willing to risk today when everything we stand for as a liberal and progressive institution is again under threat? When we are supposed to subscribe to a limited version of what makes America great? Will we put up a curtain to cover the peace table in the Orozco room because it aspires to a world where people of color have an equal place at shaping our institutions? Will we cover the all gender signs on our own bathroom doors? Or will we stand up to reclaim the university space as a sanctuary for freedom of speech and ideas and a refuge for those under attack? How will we step up to create a space for true diversity and inclusion within our, and beyond our university? How do we stand for social justice when our students face barriers within our own institution in their choice to unionize? How 
do we reconcile the fact that next to our original commitment to provide low-cost education opportunities for rich and poor, we are complicit in a whole system built upon the collection of interest on more than a trillion dollars of student debt. And while we have to face those contradictions in our history and in our present, we also have to know that we live in a country where speaking openly and freely is still possible. And we enjoy the tremendous privilege of an education and a university space that offers the tools to challenge and imagine new answers to these questions. With that freedom and that privilege, these past few months, some of us has taken, have taken the streets Washington Square, Union Square, Foley Square, Fifth Avenue, Battery Park, JFK Airport. These spaces take on new meanings when we act upon them, when we redefine their purpose and their use. And just as we call these streets our streets, beyond the moment of protest, we need to continuously participate in building our communities. That we that makes our institutions our institutions. This means taking a stance, recalling the founding moments and facing the present reality of our institutions to reclaim and redefine terms such as sanctuary to resist a discourse that criminalizes and divides. While some today will challenge and say that such a stance promises too much, that it will make us a target, that it will risk more than it will offer, Resistance means stepping up and defending our commitments to equality and freedom, true to our history, which includes a university in exile, true to our present and to the future we want to be a part of as an intellectual and creative haven that never has and never will settle for the status quo, as our website promises. But taking a stance against injustice does not mean overlooking the limitations, contradictions, and consequences of our actions. It may be that declaring that we are a sanctuary today, as we were before, is read as a limited framework to move forward if it focuses merely on temporary protection rather than on larger claims for structural change. But it is up to us to ask those difficult questions and to fill such concepts and actions with meaning. It is up to us to make a new we. It is up to us to keep finding ways to explain that the Women's March is not just about women's rights, that as Martin Luther King said, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny. And that means that when we make a claim for the university and other spaces as sanctuary, we are not just thinking about erasing the lines that divide citizens from non-citizens, the migrant and the refugee. In the words of the Women's March Pledge of Liberation, we are fighting against attacks on queer and trans people, on disabled people, on black, brown and indigenous people, on poor people, on Muslim, Latinx and Jewish people, attacks on healthcare and the environment, and the rendering of violence against women as a pre-existing condition. These are all one assault on our fundamental rights to live with dignity, autonomy, and liberty. If we listen, if we can see through the wreckage and the noise that follows each of the daily tremors that remind us the kind of change that is taking place and what is at stake, it is clear that we can only build long-lasting ties of solidarity if we recognize that a future with justice cannot exist if our neighbor cannot look ahead and think about the next day or even the next hour because their lives are threatened at every turn with the possibility of deportation. Or when the color of your skin puts you in danger at the hands of the police. Or when your religion or your name makes you a suspect. 
or when you have to work around the clock in order to survive, or when your land is stolen and polluted by an oil pipeline, or when you can't drink the water because it is poisoned with lead, or when you cannot afford to go to the doctor, when sexual assault or domestic violence are preconditions that cannot be covered by insurance, or when your only option to stay alive is to cross a desert or put your whole family on a makeshift boat to get to another country. And while it may seem like optimism and hope are intangible in the face of such challenges, I take James Baldwin's courage and vision to say, I cannot be a pessimist because I am alive. This optimism is necessarily a result of my everyday experiences in this institution, of my encounters with my colleagues, your professors, of having met many of you, those before you and those who, have, who are coming next. It is a result of seeing your creativity and your passion and being challenged by your questions. But I will not say that the future is in your hands that you are our only hope for what is ahead. Because just as this work requires the courage to examine our contradictions, challenge our assumptions, and rebuild anew, collaboratively, and in solidarity across issues, it also requires a vision that brings together past, present, and future, which entails work across generations and across borders. It requires us to look within and also beyond, knowing that the lines of inequality and injustice that we are trying to erase in our everyday lives, in this particular time and place, are tied to the lives of others in places near and far, in a history we share and a future we have yet to create. So, class of 2017, today we move forward, we look back, we face the ruins, we listen, we share, we speak up, stand up, step up, rise up, wake up, show up, with the one certainty that while we may not know each other, we need each other to build a new, radically just world. Thank you. Thank you, Alexandra. Much to think about and to remember. It is now time to present the candidates for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. We ask that all the parents and guests please remain seated and give us just a couple minutes as we have the students go to the back of the room so they can come forward. Tawisha Balachandra Zaveri. Alex Gerald. Catherine McCauley. Holly Woodbury. Emily Dabney. Sahar Sefadari. Elena Petrovska. Aliyah Hakim. <laughs> Naomi Kanukayev. <laughs> Mariana Noguera Devers. <laughs> Sarah Cross. <laughs> Skyler McGuire. 
Petra Jahrar. Genevieve Parkington. Clark McRae. Sasha Hudson. Emily Robinson. Carolyn Moyer. Lisa Brenner. Eric Bayless Hall. Elena Dowling. Lee Bar Sade. Andrea Ibera. Andy Krause. Kennedy Daniels. Diana Bartlett. Lena Ledvin. Julia Rickleffs. Josephine Cameron. Stephanie Bon Jovi. Jocelyn Savoy. Michael Kemet. Mitchell Costers. Rachel Damon. Maria Rivera. Maria Rivera. Lydia Tarillo. Anna Witt. Emily Rogal. Jacqueline Jacob. Matthew Leonard. Sydney Teed. Sydney Solomon. Vesna Bosik. Antonia Rettenwander. <laughs> Leah Tashman. Latisha Joyner. Kate Burnham. Emma Jacobs. Tamara Azuri. Alexander Compton. Chloe Glanville. Maya Gutman McKenzie. Sean Marome. Alex Burson. Jessica Perner. Hannah Rasmussen Labonte. Kayla Heisler. Seth Majnoon. Ari Bloom. Zachary Poras. Osun Montaz. Haya Reese. Shelby Jackson. Ella Wasserman Smith. Isabel O'Farrell Ralston. Malika Caldwell. Michaela Copper. Yasmin Lutweiler. Catherine Kennelly. Caitlin Lapolito. Isabella Rojas Bauso. Maggie McLaughlin. Taylor Lewis. Thomas Blakely. Savannah Turley. Alia Nunez. Andrea Santos. 
Tiggy Flaherty. Bailey Higgins. Quinn Cordaro. Chloe Bowden. Stephanie Zanislavski. Sarah Laser. Renata Bolotova. Olympia Lakshmi Shivatsani. All right. Dudone Kanyanwadake Rakwa. Emily Hoy. Penelope Eaton. Ashley Bryson Beam. Tyler Elmore. Grace Raymond. Alexandra Bandoni. Erica Rivera. Giovanni Cortez. Gabriela Lewis. Gabriela Talasan. Zachary Thompson. Para Musakadek. Taylor Lynch. Emily Kiros. Hannah Krasko. Avery House. Nina Luna Lamkov. Una Murphy. Afnan Arif Abdullah Al Yafai. Tiana Bui. Natasha Red. Ariana Gomez. Leopold Schleifert. Raisa Kubi. Neil Balser. Duncan Figurski. William Ananya. Owen Deutsch. Charles Innes. Sarah Berenbaum. Brianna Ashkar. James Moser. Samantha Roy. Odalis Garcia. Thomas Beery. Marissa Farr. Jacqueline Farrell. Daisy McNary, Shelby Bolin, Alejandra Jaramillo, Ruby Greenberg, Angela Difidi, Nicole Marie Coascu Cassi, Taylor Kugler, Shana. Alkalamis, Annie Sophie Sula, Gabriela Padilla, Charlotte Betancourt, Andrew Poirier, Arlette Tabelli, Linus Mumford, Ayn Eccles. Mabel Garcia, Victor Hutton, Alia San Filippo, Catherine Gill, Jane Dorsey, Ludovico Mauri, Althea Bennett, Rebecca Zola, Nina Dreyfus. 
Sarah Hogan. Stephanie Slade Lewis. James Malzone. Zoe Zelkine. Aliyah West. Catherine Stroman. Morgan Quinn Rasponti. Marissa Gary. Emily Pelletier. Indigo Olivier. Regan Rodriguez. Paul Ivory. Victoria Ortega. Madeline Lane. Noor Al Kaluti. Daniel Hunt. Joshua Zimber. Aaron Page. Amanda Harper. Victoria Iglesias Nieves. Charles Wong. Aki Okoshi. Maya Lazaro. Isabel Natureman. Leo Kiker. Ellen Carpenter. Danny Schneiderman. Drishti Kangwali. Adriana Guitares. Gideon Lazarus. Elios Oren Singh Bajwa. Morgan Moore. William Confalone. Omer Bill. Lily Smith. Nicole Story. Maya Paduano. Henry Morales. Mei Ping Kasi Ang. Ashley Paget. Michaela Anna Sophie Wissen. Madeleine Crenshaw. Amber Vanterpool. Equa Musumiba. Shwana Sanichar. Sarah Nekafar. Kaylin Ferris. Sean Patrick Rohr. Emma Story Hayward. Sally Young. Devin Davies Wood. Margaret Corby Taylor. Madeline Bryden. Mark Suchu. Zoe Julivier. Cecily Aubrey. Sayer Quevedo. Luna Olavaria Gallegos. Riva Goldman. Joseph Burkholder. Justin Calvert. Jake Griswold. Anna Crusell. Jonas Wolf, Julia Purcell, Veronica Stone, Chelsea Casey, Antonio Parisi, and Cole Stokely. Congratulations, 2004 graduates.
And now, first I would like to thank, once again, the faculty, the staff, the family and friends who have gathered to celebrate the class of 2017. And now, in a gesture to recognize all that you have accomplished here, graduates, if you still have your hats on, move your tassel from the left to the right. As we exit, the faculty will exit first, and then the students, and then parents, family, friends, you're welcome to join us outside to celebrate and congratulate the class of 2017. You have heard some wise words today. Go forth. Congratulations. Thank you.